looking in the program today. President Julius Madabi has officially commissioned a newly constructed 16 classroom building at the Services Secondary School in Freetown. The Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, has entered into a memorandum of understanding with Chadi to enhance in the fight against money laundering and financing of terrorism. As a mark of their 120 year celebration since the establishment of the bank via its transaction from Barclays to Rockwell Commercial Bank, the management of the bank on Monday, 16 September, lit up the bank to illuminate the accomplishment under the new management of Dr. Ekundayo Walt Walton Gilpin from a loss making to a profit making bank. All these and more are coming up shortly. With me in the studio is Reverend Jibrila Kagbo from the National Commission for Democracy. We shall be discussing about the World Democracy Day as it was celebrated on the 15th of September and democracy issues in Sierra Leone in general. Good morning, Reverend. Welcome to the program. Good morning and thanks for hosting me. Welcome. And remember, the Star Good Morning Show is sponsored by Rockwell Commercial Bank. Let's first have a message from our sponsors. Sim couple allow old and young to make deposits and withdraw cash from their account at any time and anywhere. With Rokel Commercial Bank SIM Couple, you can send and receive money at any place and any time. Rokel Commercial Bank don't make life better for we all. Well, before I come to my studio guest, let's begin with our first news item for today. President Julius Madabu has officially commissioned a newly constructed 16 classroom building at the Services Secondary School in Freetown. Judge Elliot Sam has more and in our reports. While giving out his keynote address, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Retired Brigadier Julius Marabio, said the education facility which have been provided through the efforts of the Honorable Member of Parliament, Ibrahim Tawa Conte, for both Juba and the Number 9 community, will address the long suffering of parents and that of the children who have been deprived for so long of quality education. The president further admonished the beneficiaries to take good care of the facilities. Today, this newly constructed comprehensive primary school is an evidence of a community, a group of Sierraleans, and a member of the uh, parliament heeding the call for all Sierraleans to support the free quality education program. From a makeshift corrugated iron sheet structure, to a multi-story building with 15 classrooms fully packed with furniture, high teachers' office, two stores, this newly constructed school will increase access to education for more children in number nine community, Spur Road, Babadori, Pipelines, Jagema, Trita Road. Despite our commitment to free quality education, the use of examination malpractice that I've already referred to has triggered a national debate in this country, bringing about our educational system into disrepute. Parents, teachers, and pupils all have responsibility to ensure we call examination malpractice. Parents who give money to their children to engage in examination malpractice are as guilty as teachers who receive such money to aid examination practice and pupils who participate in malpractice. Examination malpractice destroys the soul of our educational system and we must all support the current effort by the Anti-Corruption Commission to ensure all those involved in examination malpractice However, those efforts by the Anti-Corruption Commission must be within the law and adhere to due process and respect for human rights. As immediate steps to address examination of practice, I wish to announce the following. First, all those caught and or suspended, suspected of examination of practice should be prosecuted without delay 
on the exemption. Seven, any teacher or school head, court and prosecutor should be terminated from service. Third, all centers suspected of examination or practice should have their results cancelled. Under this government, examination and practice will no longer be a way of life for parents and people across the country. A successful 2018-2019 academic year is now our singular, and it's now my singular honor, ladies and gentlemen, to commission this beautiful edifice provided by no less a person but your talk and do honorable member of parliament I hope many other members of the parliament will emulate this great initiative of Honorable Kawa. Thank you, and I wish you the best, and I hope you will use this for the benefit of the community. The Honorable Member of Parliament of Constituency 132, Honorable Ibrahim Tawa Conte, while addressing the gathering, said, Personally, as an individual, whenever he made a promise, he will make sure that he delivered it. And that is what he has demonstrated to the people of both Juba and the Nomanai community by providing them well-standard learning facilities, which he said will increase the level of education in the community. During the electoral campaign, Your Excellency, I took a solemn vow that when elected, I would transform the default state classroom building that was only fit to be a degree used for the provision of education for poor children in this community aforementioned. That same building was holding classes one to six, serving as a community school will be reconstructed with befitting standards, correct ambience and seek for the dispensation of education and learning. Most of your excellency, during the election campaign, the most familiar of the SNPD manifesto was and still remains the free quality education. On the backdrop of the facility existing in this community, serving two other communities as community owned low-income private school, I see no way where the poor children of these communities will benefit from the free quality education of His Excellency President. Also addressing the gathering, the Deputy Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, Honorable Emil Kadiatu Grogar, praises the Honorable Ibrahim Tawa Conte for complementing the efforts of the President and that of their ministry on the free and quality education. She also called on the beneficiaries to make good use of the facility. Your relentless efforts to construct these magnificent structures is worth noting. And as I said, what emulating? You have joined our dear president and our ministry of basic and senior secondary education to prepare our young people to meet future challenges. Thank you. For Star News in Freetown, George Elliott Sam reporting. Many thanks to George Elliott Sam for putting that report together. 23 minutes gone past 9 is the time from our studio clock. And remember, you're still watching the Star Good Morning Show. Now, Sierra Leone joined other countries across the world to celebrate World International Democracy Day on the 15th of September 2019. So with me in the studio to discuss more on that and democracy issues in Sierra Leone, is the communications presence from the National Commission for Democracy, Reverend Jibrila Kagbo. Good morning again, Reverend. Good morning. Now, um, setting aside the 15th of September as the day, International Day of Democracy, what is the significance of that day? Um, thanks very much. Definitely it has very serious significance, especially because um, the world over, the one form of governance that um, is considered as good for most nations of the world, because you don't have every nation of the world practicing democracy, but um, most nations of the world and um, the general 
governance body of the world has um, decided that um, that they should be used to remind states and the various players, both states and non-state actors in the context of the state, to be um, concerned and to consider and in fact think about this thing that we call democracy. How far we've come with it and what more we can do to ensure that that which is called government of the people by the people and for the people is actually strengthened because um, it has been realized that it is in the context of democracy that what we call the fundamental rights and freedoms of individuals, it is in that context that they, they are like realized, recognized, promoted, protected, etc. Outside the confines of democracy, it's difficult for such rights um, to be even recognized, not to talk about protecting them or promoting them. And so on that particular day, it's to bring to the consciousness of people in states, leaders in particular, about uh, um, say a time to, to, to take stock. How far have we gone? How much progress have we made in terms of democracy? Are we allowing people to express their rights and freedoms? Um, is justice being served? What about um, people participating in the governance of the state? And that is why, in fact, it's interesting that we have this theme, participation, that tells you that people are central to um, the uh, workings okay. of Reverend, democracy. Before we come to the theme, which is participation, let's look at Sierra Leone's progress, like you rightly said, how far have we gone uh, in a democracy. Let's look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. How far has Sierra Leone gone? in terms of promoting a democracy? Um, the answer to that question is that we have come a long way, but we still have room for improvement. We, from our perspective, usually when we do analysis about um, democratic successes, we consider three elements. Of course, we can open those three elements to several um, variables, but essentially we're looking at the institutions. We're looking at the processes, we're looking at the culture, all of, the, all of those in the context of democracy. You ask the question, do we have in place what you might call the democratic institutions to foster a democracy, to work towards consolidating a democracy? The answer is yes. We've done a lot. We, 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 we've achieved so many things in terms of setting up the institutions. Uh, and um, that is why at times it's even bothersome when people question the existence of certain institutions, forgetting that um, it is those institutions that you put together. Yes, we, we, we might look at the administration, their operations, etc. But I think what we should be doing is to beef them up, to strengthen them, because these institutions are needed, even as we analyze our democracy. If you go to um, the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goal, Goal 16, talks about that significantly in terms of how it's to be done. So we should be uh, um, looking at ways and means of strengthening existing institutions that are democratic institutions. Of course, NCD comes under that category, NEC, ACC, Human Rights Commission, PPRC, the Office of the Ombudsman, etc., etc. We have these institutions, the House of Parliament, the, the executive arm of government, the judiciary. All of these are institutions that are required, that are necessary, in the states when we assess our democracy. But going beyond that, we also want to look at the various democratic processes that we are involved in. When elections are conducted, how do we go about that? When we make our laws, what processes do they go through? Do we, do we have consult, enough consultations? Uh, uh, do the laws reflect the wishes and aspirations of the people? These are all questions you ask as you analyze your democracy in terms of the processes that are involved the day-to-day -day running of the, the affairs of the state, whether, um, say, central government, local government, etc. All of these are issues that come into play. But added to that, we also want to consider what you call the culture of democracy. How do we carry out the functions of these institutions? How do we roll out these uh, um, processes? that um, you might say, well, they are actually in line 
with what you call best practice in democratic good governance. And that is one area where, honestly, if you ask me, we are still struggling in terms of ensuring the right democratic culture. And that is why for us at NCD, we take that issue seriously. We are actually working on rolling out different programs to ensure we enhance the right civic culture in our country, which is that culture that, is, that, that ensures that democracy thrives. And uh, in it, you, you talk about mutual respect and tolerance. Just that alone, we, when we look around, we know that so much is missing. We see when elections are conducted, violence will just erupt easily. And uh, we know what happened with 110, um, August 24th. By the time you know it, um, well, all of the other stations we are counted. The results, of course, are public, but the, 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 the entire elections, the, the elections we are canceled because of um, what happened in one of the, the polling centers of 10 stations. You look at the way... The, so, the, the, so, so, so we, we ask the question, Sierra Leone is a democratic state, and, and going through the context of democracy, it is a government for the people, by the people, people and, and for the people. people. So the question is, what type of democracy is Sierra Leone practicing? Um, the answer can come this way. In the first instance, Sierra Leone is a constitutional democracy where we have in place a constitution that gives us basic laws in terms of how we, we roll out our democracy and in terms of the institutions that should be established and um, the various authorities and the, the, the different state paraphernalia as it were. We have that kind of outfit, that kind of fixture through our constitution. So we call it a constitutional democracy, and it makes room for multi-party democracy. And um, added to that, we can say we practice what we call indirect or representative democracy. We, it, 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 it's difficult now. It's difficult to have a state that has a small number for everybody to come together to make decisions regarding how they should be governed. So we've come, we've come a long way from that, from the fifth uh, uh, um, century, uh, fifth BC century state of um, uh, um, 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 Greece, that is Athens, mm -hmm. the city state of Athens. That was where they actually practiced direct democracy, where people, the free men, would come together and make decisions about the governance of their city. And we, we, well, we used to call it a city state. And the same principles have evolved over time, but now because of um, the number in terms of um, population increase across the world, even for a country, small country like Sierra Leone, we cannot have all 7 million people come together to make decisions. So um, we, we delimit the, the, the country into constituencies. We have uh, um, wards, etc., where we, we, we elect our members of parliament, we elect our local councillors. They go to represent us nationally as well as locally. And through their representation, our voices are heard, even though we have several questions about how such um, um, is happening that, 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 that should make us consider this very important theme of, uh, um, that um, the UN has um, rolled out to us for 2019, participation. Are the people fully involved? Are they even aware of what is going on? Do, is there regular consultation? Um, so going back to the issue, we are actually practicing what we call representative democracy. So we look at the theme participation, and that, that has been a key thing for so many groups, so many people, CSOs, calling for, for participation and inclusion. What's your take? How can you say, uh, are, we, are the present government practicing the good tenets of democracy? Um, we, probably we, 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 we answer the question looking at the big picture of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. We have had serious problem with inclusion. We've had serious problem with the um, conventional participation of the people because participation can be conventional, it can be unconventional. And um, when we say conventional, it is that positive aspect, not the negative one where people have to fight for their rights. But um, enough space is given to everybody to express themselves to ensure that um, what is theirs in terms of their fundamental human rights 
and their freedoms, nobody is taking it away from them. We've seen tension um, before the 2018 elections and even after. We, we, we notice that uh, there is serious divide, especially between the, 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 the party in government and the key main opposition in the country. They've not been seen eye to eye. And um, we've, we, we've seen that uh, um, displayed in several areas where violence will just erupt. But there is something, I, I call it a glimmer of hope. Recently, we, we saw something that we've been asking for, something that all of us have been longing for. In fact, at NCD, there is hardly there is a program that we do on radio or television that will not call for that, for the former president and the current president to come together and put aside their differences. Eventually, that has happened. We want to see if we can sustain that to ensure it, 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 it so, trickles so, so down. What is the implication of that That in, in a building up our national cohesion, say oh, the two main political parties? You know, there is this, there is this expression mm -hmm. that leadership, everything rises or falls around leadership. When the leaders, our current president, His Excellency uh, President Julius Madabio, and the former president, coming together, even, you might call it symbolic. In fact, that was what some of us were longing for, even uh, um, at Bintumani, when we had the Bintumani 3. We thought that was going to happen. In terms of our initial planning, we were working on that. But after some time, well, things uh, 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 spiraled out of control. It did not happen. But eventually it has happened. And for us, it is the right thing that they've done. And we want to see it sustained. I saw somewhere, I did not actually read the article, but I saw the headline that, that is indicating that such uh, meetings will be held every six months. And for me, if that is true, if the content of that um, caption is actually saying that, that is something we look forward to. And that is something that all the players in the political arena should learn from. That, you see, President Bio and former President Eskoma, they can now talk. Before now, it, it appeared as if it was impossible that um, former president was not going to leave McKinney to come to Freetown and, and talk to the current president. And nobody was going to go to McKinney to talk to the former president. We thought that was impossible, but we saw the move of uh, um, the vice president and eventually the, the former president came to town and went to state house. You see, some other person might have said, you know what, I'm too big for this. I have been insulted, I've been damned, so many things uh, um, have been said. But I always say this, there is no politician in this country. That, do you see that uh, as a move uh, in bridging bridge, bridge the political divide in the country? Definitely, it should be seen from that perspective. Mm. Of course, I know people have their misgivings. Is it just for the camera? Or are they sincere? We, we, we as the people, we can talk to them. We can continue with the appeals to them for it to be sincere, even if it was not so. We want it to be sincere, coming from the bottom of the heart. And let me, let me, let me, let me, let me address it from this perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm a servant of God, and the two of them are Christians. Let us, let's don't forget that in Christianity, forgiveness is paramount, regardless of the enormity of the offense against you. Forgiveness is paramount. So they have to, like it's in the expression, bury the hatchet and lift up the national colors as being more important than any of the party colors that is putting Sierra Leone first. When we pledge our love and loyalty, it is not to APC or SLPP, but it is to Sierra Leone. It is not to any other parochial interest, it is to Sierra Leone. And we must treat that pledge with every seriousness. It's, it's, it's um, an oath. It, it, we, we are making a covenant. And that covenant is sanctioned and approved by God himself. Because God has put us together as compatriot citizens in the context of the state called Sierra Leone. So therefore, whatever we approve here, Everyone also has a way of approving it. Let me, let me, uh, 
uh, permit me to use your studio for to, to, to preach a little. Mm -hmm. Everyone sanctions that because it is the, it said um, Vox Populi Vox Day. The voice of the people is the voice of God. So therefore, if we wish for that, even as they've started coming together, we want we want to see that 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 coming together is deepened. It's not just superficial. It's not just on the surface. We go deep down so that we can address the issues of this nation together as a united people, not as um, um, uh, people that are divided, as we have seen in recent times and even sometime in, say, in the past. But we want going forward, we want to change that narrative. The story should change. As a nation, it's not at all times they should hear the negative things. Let us now go to the news. Let's make the headlines, not just locally but internationally, that Sierra Leone is moving away from those vices, those negative things that we are being like, um, reported about for the right reasons. And when we do that, the benefits are huge. We attract um, tourists to come to our country. We attract also um, foreign investment to our country. And we can see even internally, we'll have various sectors thriving. People will enjoy the, 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 the dividend of democracy. People will enjoy the dividend of peace. Because if you, there is tension in your country, nothing happens well. Nothing goes right. But when, we, when the atmosphere of peace is, is um, established, almost everything will happen very well. We know what is happening in terms of even the way the economy is going. And the, 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 the situation is actually the product of the atmosphere in the country. Because it is when people are engaged in meaningful business with the support of outsiders coming in to invest, that is when we see our economy growing or thriving. But in the climate or atmosphere, where there is constant tension, you don't even know what's going to happen next, the, 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 the situation um, festers, the situation continues. But we believe that um, with what we've seen, with the former president going to state house to meet with the current president, we believe the atmosphere will begin to improve, okay. and that will um, encourage investors to come into our country, and that will encourage others to go about doing their normal businesses. All right, continue to stay with me. It's Reverend Jibrile Kagbo, um, communications persons from the National Commission for Democracy. We're discussing democracy in Sierra Leone as Sierra Leone joined other countries across the world in celebrating International Democracy Day. Now, let's turn our attention to another news item. But before that, remember entertainment and uh, Star TV is coming up with 21 Artists 21 Stan Music Festival on the 29th of November. Make sure you be a part of that. Now, next news item, as a mark of the 120-year celebration since the establishment of the bank, via its transition from Barclays um, to Rukel Commercial Bank, the management of the bank on Monday, 16 September 2019, leads up the bank to illuminate their accomplishments under the new management of Dr. Walton Ekundayo Gilpin from a loss-making to a profit-making bank. Well, let's have more in this. Okay, we do. Yeah. You know, what they talk about 20 years, I just said, turn back and see them in Lily Bobo. When at 20 years, I see saying a big, big man. Now they will only fair for me now. That's all okay, don't answer. 20 years of excellence. 20 years of economic support to this nation. You come with a pay big tax to government too. 20 years of employment. You know how many people that work at commercial bank go and play in 20 years? We're not going to go out of our employment. Apart from that, in say 20 years, you know how much non pass that will pocket them, that will post them? That are plenty, plenty, plenty billion. So may God bless Roque Commercial Bank. Amen. May God make Roque Commercial Bank continue for shine. Amen. And shine. Amen. May God make all in our world the world the witnesses and industry. We must celebrate until 25 years, 30 years. 
But the prayer is, when I went to Mafia, before that 25 years they reach, when I all go down there, when I keep them in Jesus' name. Yeah. And one thing, before when they reach that 25, now that the bank industry, we say we there with Tawa, we are there with the with the number, with the number two, the number two, the number two really. So tell them we can go near number one, but the number two we there. But me not say come next year. And by God in your support, your car commercial bank will be number one. So for us here today, we are really happy to be here. I must say, I'm glad the bad for see this particular 20th anniversary and 102 years of banking in Sierra Leone. Let's clap for myself. 102 years of banking in Sierra Leone. I believe mean, this is the second oldest bank in Sierra The first one, I mean, Bank of British West Africa. I think later on, later on, they changed to Standard Chartered Bank. After that, the nine Barclays Bank come, then they will then go, Rocket Bank in continue. It shows that this particular bank is there, they are Tigo, no sign of go. And me, I've been there where the bank begin. 103 years ago. I'm in a hotel the room. And I can tell you that I'm not here, I'm in a But the bottom line is that today, who are they? Who are they? Who are they? And we they continue for the new year. And they can grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. You know, when you look around the banking sector inside this country, the banking sector where you get more cool possibility when you don't even sleep. If they make like a soap leopard. Today, one leopard I wake up. What is what is leopard name? Okay. High name. Okay. High name. Okay. And how many not say this bank in the tower for people? When they ask any bank today, say, tell me who's a competitor. Who's bank in the call? Because now we are the competitor for everybody else. And I can tell them, say, we just begin. Yeah. They're not hearing nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, yeah. But God in power, we get in the world, get inside, we, 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 we sleep, they will hide. Which man call an ace up your sleeve. They don't say ace your sleeve, he say ace, A-C-E. <laughs> because the man has spied the spy for getting paper. So I can read the time again. The president said, don't get to the spy. Rokel Bank for the spy. When they get with ace, A-C-E, up with sleeve. That means the way they play card, that is an important card. You yeah. get them. We are the spy when we get commercial bank. Welcome back. This is the Star Good Morning Show, and Reverend Jibrile Kabo is still with me in the studio. Now, Reverend, let's look at uh, Sierra Leone sustainability in a democratic games. Are we making any headway? Well, um, democracy is not um, an event. It's not one of something. It's a process. The truth of the matter is we've come a long way. Um, it take even the Second Republic, um, in terms of date, it commenced in 1996 after our elections that brought into the presidency the late president Ahmed Jan Kaba. And um, since then we've been we've been working real hard. We know what we, from sixty one to let's say sixty seven and um, getting down to um, the seventies we had multi-party democracy but by um 78 we we went into um, a one-party state and um, pluralism was killed uh, the kind of participation that um, is uh, expected in a multi-party democracy was gone and by 92 we, we were starting even from 91 around the time of the war we had in place a constitution that was going to reintroduce multi-party democracy. But by 92, the, 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 the military guys took over, NPRC, and um, they formed, in 94, whilst they were governing the country, they formed the National Commission for Democracy to um, pave the path for the return to civilian rule and to promote 
um, democratic good governance and to ensure its consolidation. So we were established and we, we started charting the course. You, you look at um, what NCD did even with the various conferences, civilian and military relations, the, the, the road to peace, etc., etc. We started like uh, um, creating the path and eventually we had our elections. Even though it was challenging, difficult to, to have that, um, those elections hosted in 96, the war was raging. People, if you, they, they, we had different shades of opinion. People differed in terms of what they wanted at the time, but there was insistence and um, NCD provided that drive because there was an institution that everybody looked up to in terms of um, giving direction for democracy. And because of that direction, the people insisted and we had um, our elections under multi-party democracy, something that had not happened for a very long time. Remember from 78, mm. down the line, it was just one party that was in power. But 1996, uh, um, it was a watershed in terms of um, uh, um, democratic pluralism. And NCD was fully involved in, in charting the course and shaping the pathway. And of course, we had a civilian regime and uh, uh, um, several reforms were made, institutions were established, and um, we, we started gradually putting in place those uh, uh, um, things that will ensure that um, democratic good governance is a reality in Sierra Leone. So you, 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 have, you have various institutions coming up. Well, of course, NCD had been in existence. The Constitution had um, spoken about so other, inst other institutions that should be set up. So we had, by the elections, we had the interim National Electoral Commission, and of course, after that, we had it as a full-blown recognized institution to carry out um, elections for the state. And we also had PPRC coming on board. So we, 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 our democracy has been growing gradually. But like I said to you, the, the question is really about uh, the, uh, uh, the, the democratic culture. We are opting now. Tolerance is a serious challenge. Yes, that's it's very, very serious. We've not come to that point. And let me, let me, let me, let me emphasize that point mm -hmm. and, and to say that at NCD, we are actually doing our best to foster the right democratic culture. And very soon, we, 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 we've been doing it, um, not regularly, but now we want to do it regularly in terms of moving around the country targeting different institutions, learning institutions, um, where we, we put it both the formal and the non-formal sectors to ensure we go to every, the, the last uh, community in our nation to hear the message as to what will ensure the right atmosphere prevails for our democracy to succeed, especially in the area of building the right democratic culture, because that is where we have a serious deficit. So how, we, how do we move away from that? This culture of not letting the voice of the people be heard, the masses, um, how can their voices be heard? It, 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 com it comes with um, insistence. Mm -hmm. It comes with persistence. It comes with um, delivering the message to the people again and again. It comes with engaging the stakeholders. For most of the time, we've had this situation in our country especially with the multi-party democracy situation, those in opposition, their voices are the loudest because of one thing or the other. And those that are in governance, because the vehicle of political parties, that is what we employ to take people to state house, to parliament, and to other elected offices. Those that are there because they enjoy what you call the suit of office, the, the power of incumbency, at times, the cries of others, um, such, it's really, uh, 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 such cries do not make sense to them. But when, when, when there is there's a reversal of political fortunes, then they too will pick up the cries and they start making complaints. They, start, they, they, they point out the weaknesses. So we want a situation wherein they keep the one, those that are in governance and those that are in opposition, they should come together. And all of us as a people, to fix our problems, especially from a constitutional perspective. Remember, 
where constitutional democracy and most of what we do comes from the constitution. So if we, if we have loopholes, if we have those clauses of provisions that we call clawback, it gives with one and takes with the other. One clear example, for instance, you go to um, chapter 2 of the Constitution that deals with the fundamental principles of state policy. That is how the, the, the nation should be governed, how different institutions should um, uh, um, function. One will tell you that every institution of the state has the responsibility of ensuring that these things are brought into um, practical reality in terms of governance of the state. But when you get to the same, the end of that chapter, uh, uh, section 14, it tells you all of these principles that are so wonderful that should ensure that we, our democracy works. You cannot take anybody to court for that, regardless of what we've said in, in section 4. So you see, the same constitution, it gives you that kind of thing. But honestly, if you ask me, if politicians are aware that I am not just going to state house or parliament or any local assembly just because I, I want to enrich myself. At the end of the day, if I fail to deliver, the people are going to take me to court, they are going to ask questions, our politicians will sit up. The, glim, the, the, the blame game will end. It is about how to fix the problems. That is what will be their focus because uh, I know, take for instance, Reverend Kagbo, I am the so-so of this particular constituency or the President of the Republic, I know at the end of my tenure, or even during the course of my tenure, if I fail to deliver based on the promises that I have made, Leonard will go to court and say, you know what, let the president or this parliamentarian explain to me why this and that has not happened. But the constitution does not give us that kind of thing. It tells you that all of these things, as beautiful as they are, the ideals in terms of how the state should be governed, you cannot take anybody to court if they are not provided. And not forgetting that uh, um, under that particular chapter, it provides you with the political objectives of the state. It t tells you the economic objective, the, the educational, the social, the foreign policy objectives. All of those, they are the principles that should help us for good governance to be fully established, for the right things to happen. But um, alas, so, so I, I cannot take anybody to anywhere to answer me, why have you not given me the roads that you should give me? Why have you not given me the right kind of education that I should have? Nobody is going to answer any question so on that. In a nutshell, the NCD being the body responsible to monitor democratic good governance in Sierra Leone, how can you um, assess the present government, the, the way in which they, they operate, the demo, their democratic manner? in which they operate in Sierra Leone, taking, making comparison with previous governments? Um, it is still a mixed bag. Mm. Um, recently, the president was on television to tell us that he did not promise uh, a quick fix, that then we should judge him at the end of his tenure. That was what he told us. But that is not uh, I'm supposed to mean people cannot assess him. He is a public figure. He asked for our support as a nation to say, give me uh, uh, this support, I can do X, Y, Z. And we, the, the assessment has started. In fact, you have other institutions, there is this um, uh, um, thing, they call it biometer, or, or presimeter, where the promises made by the president, the number is huge, more than 500 promises, and we are judging him on the basis of that. And um, if you look, it, it's, it's, it's a start. We're getting to, to we just ended the first year. We, 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 we are now in year two, and we're monitoring what is happening. But um, if you, if, uh, a fear assessment can be, we have seen efforts being made, but there is still so much room for improvement that they sh the, the president and his pre current team should not rest on their oars, but they should work real hard to ensure that the promises that they made, the, the development plan that they've put in place, people must see them implemented and people must enjoy the benefits of what we call the dividends of democracy under his leadership. The one thing that has come out clearly, which is a flagship of this government, it is the free quality education. We've seen it's been rolled out. Of course, um, the, the reactions or responses of the people 
when you gauge them it will tell you that it is still fraught with challenges but at least effort is being made we've started because if you go to the constitution under the education objectives of the state it tells you that government should provide that kind of uh, 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 education free education up to a certain level and it has the, the rollout has started but the the the, the, the the comprehensive picture cannot be assessed now because it's just uh, um, the first the phase. phase. And uh, as we move on, we'll look at the other areas because we still have parents buying uniforms, mm -hmm. buying other materials to go to school. But honestly, if you ask me, it's, it's reduction in terms of the cost that families can bear. Because if I used to pay fees and I also have to buy other materials, but now I'm not paying fees, it's just the materials, at least it's a reduction in cost. But we must say this, the schools should not abuse the situation. Because if that delicate balance is not maintained, the effort of government cannot be appreciated. Okay. Because if you reduce cost in one area, and the schools look for uh, uh, skillful ways of reintroducing those costs in other areas, then we're still going to get to square one. So in as much as we are attempting to assess the effort that government is making, we should also assess the, the, the operations of those who are implementing that effort, the schools. All right, Reverend. Uh, what would be your closing note as we end the show? Um, UN is saying to us, participation is key in governance. Wherever you find yourself, get involved in the governance of the state. From the NCD perspective, <clears throat> we're going to be calling you guys to a democracy roundtable, <clears throat> sorry, discussion forum across the regions. Western region are slated Tuesday 24th for their own. The other regions will soon come with their own dates and venues for that um, democracy roundtable discussion forum. You're going to be notified, and we want we, we when the, the the invitation gets to you, please honor it because we want to come together. And that forum will do live broadcasts with local radio stations in the regions for others as well to be involved with what is happening with a facilitator that will guide the process to talk about the importance of especially political participation in our localities and generally and we too can come with our input we too can can state what our concerns are as we do our best to mold our democracy okay. until we come your, your way again we want to say this Sierra Leone is the only country we have as citizens wherever you go from here you're not going to be regarded as first class citizens so what do we do in the best interest of this nation keep it united Keep it peaceful and go about your normal business to contribute to the day-to-day -day development of this country called Sierra Leone. Why yeah, there is no place like home? We don't want to be like Nigerians suffering the hands of South Africans well, you see. due to xenophobic attack. Well, you see uh, thank that? you so very much, Reverend Jibril Akago. is the communications person for the National Commission for Democracy. Until tomorrow, I am Leonora Jawala. Have yourself a wonderful day. Leaving you with our inspirational quote for today, which says, Success doesn't just find you. You have to go out and get it. Be blessed. <laughs>